what we've seen is a lot of very weak text there, lots of loopholes. You mentioned the transition fuels. I mean, quite incredibly, they include one of the most polluting fossil fuels, gas, as a transition fuel. They, the, the, none of the transition is funded, so the, the scale of the transition, particularly for developing countries, will be unable to be met. And there are loopholes in the terms of so much uh, in risky technologies, dangerous and unproven technologies, to suck carbon out of the atmosphere. I mean, if you're an oil and gas baron and CEO, you must be rubbing your hands with glee. This is continuing to be a license to pollute. And what we've seen here actually is a document with the fingerprints of the United States, the UK and the European Union, because it, what it talks about is only about cutting emissions, but not about responsibility. So the idea of fairness is going. The idea of uh, uh, providing climate finance, public climate finance, that is really desperately needed, is being frittered away. Instead, the only mentions of finance are about private capital and, and a push to make developing countries have what they call an enabling environment. Now we have seen in real life what that enabling environment looks like. We've seen it in Sri Lanka, we've seen it in Pakistan, other countries which have faced these crises of both debt and climate. And what it means is you're lowering your environmental standards, you lower your workers' rights standards, you make your economy much more attractive to private capital. That private capital needs to make profit. And what private capital wants is guarantees that it will make that profit. And so now the responsibility is falling on developing countries to guarantee that profit. It's utter madness.